Hey, it's Scott with Ercolina. We are just going to go through a 030 top bender mandrel bending machine. This is for mandrel bending of tube or pipe. And again, it's a 030 model. Right now, we're looking at the uh, machine portion of it. And then we're going to take a little walk. This is a table. The table's important because it's going to allow you, in this case, to do up to a 20 foot part. There is a uh, chuck that will have a LED display lit when it's under power. And there's an air chuck that you can adjust and uh, change the jaw sets out so you can accommodate up to a 2 and 3 8 tube. And we're going to move back here a little bit. You can see the table extends back. On the back of the table, you've got your uh, cylinder for moving your mandrel rod in and out and your adjustment uh, on those nuts for the distance of position on the mandrel itself. There's a couple lines feeding that. This machine has a very simple hydraulic system, about a five gallon reservoir. And what's the hydraulics for? It's for that cylinder on the back for the uh, mandrel rod, and it's also for the clamping pressure I'm gonna talk about here in a minute. This here again is the backside. This is when you have an extension on the table, you'll have this situation, and you'll have to, uh, when it arrives, you'll have to go ahead and reattach these two lines here. They're hydraulic lines, then they go again to the table extension on the back. So you can see kind of what's going on there. And then I'll show you, there's a main on for the power. We pre-wire that per the customer request. That can be uh, 208 to 480, three phase. And then there's a uh, real quick glimpse at the uh, hydraulics and the reservoir underneath the table. Very simple, that's something the customer would also have to fill. Very simple to do. Storage for some extra tool in there, kind of nice. This is your uh, main contact block for all your hydraulic connections. Very easy to do. Again, the machine itself is going to ship separate. Then you're going to have this table. And then you're finally, if you get the uh, 20 footer, you're going to have that extension back there as well. So you'd have three pieces if we did that. But uh, at the end of the day, the hoses would be on the machine. You would make these uh, quick connections with the uh, in and out hydraulics. Very simple to snap on by hand. And then we're gonna look at the top of the machine here. This is the back side. This is an adjustment for the wiper die. We'll talk about that in a minute. It's a center former, which is what the tube's gonna wrap around and it controls the radius. You got your clamp die, and then your clamping fingers. And essentially this is also hydraulic. So this is part of the hydraulic reservoir system. You got your clamp fingers. You've got a clamp die switch. We're going to talk about how to set that. You got a tie bar. You should always have that on. Gives you a better bend, more, more uh, consistency in bending. And then you got a so it's your clamp cylinder. It's your pressure die cylinder. We'll talk about that when we set up. And this is also a pressure die lock, so it's a little extra. Keeps that pressure die from wanting to push back during a bend cycle if that would occur. Very simple control panel. We'll go through a few operations on that as well. Once you're set up, it can operate from a foot pedal, which is also included with the machine. Bend and return, very simple. You always want to make sure, again, your voltage is correct. We do that pre-shipment for you. And then there's a few connections here from the table to the machine, and we'll talk about those brief, but they're pretty much self-explanatory as to where they go. But if you're ever unsure, we want to go ahead and call Oracle in and we'll help you out. There is this little red wire here, and that's basically a fish wire because that's going to ship up inside of this tube, and you'll be able to fish the connection lines out so they're protected in here during shipment. So you'd be looking for that. During, before the shipment, this piece, the mandrel mount, would be on this, the machine head, so you're good there, and then you have the four bolts to put on here. There's a couple dowel pens on the back side of that that help line that up and assist you to do that. And you might wonder what that crank handle is on the back. That allows you to set your table rate to the radius on your tool. So what we want is a nice, consistent line all the way down the line. And if we can move this table back and forth, you can see here it's graduated. We'll set this to match the radius of the former on the tool that we're gonna bend. So, Pretty quick overview on that machine. It's again, it's a 030 Mandrel by Urkelina. Very nice system. This machine, uh, believe it or not, will bend up to a two inch pipe. 
Routinely, it's used for bending inch and a quarter, inch and a half pipe. That's very common. Handrail applications are also very common with this. And uh, a lot of people, depending on what you bend, you may want the, t the extension, which also comes with it. So again, up to 20 feet, and that typically accommodates most random pipes. All right. What we'll do now is we'll come back and we'll take a look at how the tooling looks. Again, I just want to point this out. I got the clamp die cylinder, clamp die, clamp fingers, pressure die, pressure die cylinder, pressure die lock, mandrel, the spheres on the mandrel, and then I've got your center former up here. It helps a little bit. You see the top of the center former. And then you can see when you look down, you can also see down, down the line in there. You can get a good look at that wiper. You can see the wipers lines up to a tangent point. It flows even with the uh, pressure die. And the former, it's lined up with the radius of the former. Very smooth, so it's a good continuous surface for the tube inside as you bend. So the wiper die has to be set correctly, which is, again, why you have that wiper die adjustment. The wiper die radius always matches the radius of the former, so I always want to make sure you have the right tool. And then your mandrel depth always goes to the center of the tool, and there's a line carved into the top of the former. So you get back here, you can see that line at the tip of my finger. The body of your mandrel would never exceed that when the mandrel is at the full, most forward position. Hugely critical. So we always want to set our mandrel forward, and we never want to set the front end of the body this past this tangent. And that's, that'll keep you in good shape and keep you out of trouble. So we'll go ahead, now that we've talked about the tool, we see the tools on there, we'll go ahead and maybe take those tools off and re put them on real quick just to kind of show you how they go back on. I hope that helps. Happy bending.